Hello, Bible readers. It is Thursday, December 24th. We're reading Psalm 32, 51, 86, and 122. And then we're starting a Gospel John. Pretty familiar, but I'm going to say a few words about uh, where it comes from, where it's trying to go. Uh, psalm 32, first I'll start there. This is a psalm of thanksgiving. Some have called it a wisdom song uh, because there's that beatitude opening, blessed are they who. Um, others have said it's a homily on penitence. One word that I read was to be righteous is not to always be sinless. To be righteous is to live forgiven. And so that's the message of, of 32. That'll, that'll preach, you know. Psalm 51 is a prayer for help. It's There's a theme here in these psalms today, 32, 51, and 86 especially. Um, they're all connected to penitence and righteousness. Uh, 51 is a prayer for help. What's unique about 51 is that the complaint or the lament uh, typically, it's like, you know, God, why haven't you heard me? Where are you? That kind of thing. Here, the complaint is directed at their own sinfulness. Uh, you know, why why am I so sinful? Psalm 86, another prayer for help. Uh, but this time, instead of it being a lament over individual sinfulness, there's a communal nature to this one. Um, it too gets at righteousness. And then Psalm 122, this is the third song of ascent. Remember, we've talked about this before. As people ascended to Jerusalem on pilgrimage, they would sing some of the Psalms. Uh, this was this was one, the third one. Uh, okay, John. The Gospel of John is traditionally coupled with the letters that are called John, uh, the first letter of John, second and third. Revelation also, those books together, those books and letters together are called the Johannine literature. Uh, that's not to say they're actually written all by the same person. But that's what's traditionally spoken of. And all of them are written around 100. That's a good way to remember it. So if you think Mark is most likely written first in the 60s, 70s, and then Matthew a little bit later, Luke a little bit after that, John is written after those synoptic Gospels. Those three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or I should say Mark, Matthew, and Luke, those three called synoptics, they're all telling the story in a similar way, uh, rooted in the same sources, you could say. John is not. John is telling an old story in a new way. So written all the Johannine literature around 100, and in a place where Judaism, early Christianity, the complex world, uh, the complex religions of the Greek world, and Gnostics. Gnostics are those who only sought knowledge. Gnosticism is the Greek root of knowledge. Um, Gnostics are almost anti-religionists. They're only seeking knowledge. Anyway, all those things, Judaism, early Christianity, Greek, Christ, Greek religion, and Gnosticism, they're all rubbing shoulders, often painfully. Um, perhaps then John, this gospel, comes from a place like Ephesus. Ephesus would have been a place of blended traditions where all these different ideas uh, we're trying to live together. Okay, so the author himself is, uh, we think, referred to as the beloved disciple in the gospel itself. Uh, maybe started as a disciple of John the Baptist. That's one theory uh, that that maybe you'll we'll read this when we get there. But uh, Andrew and another disciple kind of leave John the Baptist and start following Jesus. Maybe that's the author. That's one of the guesses. There's lots of guesses. Um, a note about the way uh, this gospel uses the Jews. I need to say something about that before we start, because often John's gospel calls the opponents of Jesus the Jews. Over the centuries, uncritical readers have taken this as permission, and this happened in World War II, actually, especially by the Roman Church, Uncritical readers have taken the way this gospel uses the Jews as permission to persecute or at least ignore the other people's persecution of Jewish people. Um, we will read the Jews as though there are quotations around it because it's a phrase not meant to represent ethnically Jewish people. Uh, the Gospel of John is not interested in, in like a genocidal cleansing of, of ethnically Jewish people. Instead, the author is using this phrase to stand in for those who have already made up their minds about Jesus. It's almost like he's giving a, a team name 
it's almost like there's a debate between those who are open to and have come to believe, so believers over here, and those who have not, those who have rejected. And the author just kind of blankets this phrase, the Jews, on all of them. So it's almost like a, a debate with two teams, believers and the Jews. It's so much more complicated than, than simply an ethnic label. Um, and I just think that's important for us to really recognize uh, that that Jesus would not be an enemy to his own people <laughs> uh, or think that, that Christians should go out of our way to destroy them, right? Maybe that's obvious, but in case it's not. Last thing, today we're reading chapter one. Uh, John the Baptist is part of the divine plan, his job to witness to Jesus. Uh, and then we, we start into the book of signs. I'll say more about this tomorrow. Uh, but the book of the signs is chapters 1 through 12. The first day of Jesus is where our text ends for today, echoing creation's seven days. Oh, I just said a bunch of stuff that probably didn't make sense. I'll say more tomorrow. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.